I want to welcome you all to my presentation. My name is David Hohen, level two from the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. And today, I'm going to be talking about hidden card error. I just want to go over real quick why I chose this subject. I chose this subject because I didn't know as much as I should have about hidden card error. And I think if you don't know how uh, uh, the ins and outs of a certain area, you should educate yourself. One of the best ways of doing that is creating something, creating a, a seminar for it, creating, uh, in my case, a flowchart that I thought would help better visualize what HC or what, what all decisions you should be making uh, during a hidden card error uh, scenario. So, this is my visualization of how to figure out if an error is HCE. Looks fairly convoluted, but it's broken down in such very basic questions. There is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight. Just eight very simple questions. And if you understood drawing extra cards, all of these questions, if I'm not mistaken, all these questions were questions you already had to ask yourself is, is this drawing extra cards? So is this a gameplay error? That's the, the big category that involves a couple other penalties below it. That's uh, anything from game rule violation uh, to, to uh, miss trigger and, and anything that falls under gameplay error. So not tournament errors, not unsporting conduct. If it's not a gameplay error, if this is a tournament error or some kind of unsporting conduct, it's not hidden card error. So we follow the no down, no. Uh, not hidden card error, and that's something you probably already know. Uh, and that's the same idea for all of this stuff. So, can it be corrected with only publicly available information? So, one of the things that wasn't very clearly defined within the rules is what is publicly available information. Fortunately, we have this beautiful thing called the English language that allows us to figure out what public, uh, public avail publicly available information is. So it's game information of which both players currently have access. So if you come over, you can see uh, the active player's hands. That's not publicly available information because the non-active player does not have access to that information currently. So can it be corrected with only publicly available information? Is something in the graveyard, is something in the exile where both players can look at this thing and say, that is the card uh, that is is the error then if it can be it's not hidden card error we move into another uh, infraction gameplay error and the like if it can't be was the situation caused by a preceding error that could have been corrected with only publicly available information so the reason I want to highlight could have is there are instances where at one point, if someone pointed out right then and there, we could have figured out this whole situation. The example I go back to is a Vampiric Tutor, uh, or, or sorry, not Vampiric Tutor, a Mystical Tutor, I believe, is where you search your library for uh, instant or sorcery, put it on top. You have to reveal it first. So if you don't do that, but you just put it right on top, they can't verify that that play you just did was legal. But if you call a judge right when it's on top, this whole situation can be avoided because we just flip it over, we give the game rules violation, and we move on. But you didn't. You had the opportunity, as the opponent of this person who did this gameplay error, to call a judge and fix this entire mess. You didn't. So, was this situation caused by a preceding error that could have been corrected with only publicly available information? If it could have, it is not hidden card error. If it's not that situation, we move on to the next thing. Did the opponent give permission for the card to go there? If so, well, it's something else. If I, uh, if I allow you to do something, if I give you explicit permission, we're not going to penalize them. We're not going to get them just on some random little dagger that this person's uh, trying to throw at them, some angle shooter. So if they gave permission to let you draw that additional card, we're not going to uh, go into the hidden card error fixes here. 
If they didn't give you permission, though, was it caused by a dexterity error? Did they start to draw and something else flip off their their uh, uh, deck? Uh, library, sorry. Did were they shuffling uh, their opponent's library and it just things fell? It's like simple dexterity errors. You understand that uh, that's not a part of the game that they were just trying to do there. It's just fat fingers happen. Something else. Uh, occurred to make this uh, a, a interesting situation where hidden car, yeah, hidden information went to another zone. So if it was, it's not a hidden card error. If it's not caused by a dexterity error, does exactly one player know the identity of the card? I want to say that's new to hidden card error from drawing extra cards. But if neither player knows the identity of that card not hidden card error. If both players know the identity of that card, it's not hidden card error. So one player, if they know the identity of the card and only one player, then it would be hidden card error. Is that card in a uniquely identifiable position? If that card is in a uniquely identifiable position, such as only card in your hand is the big one that we see, uh, on top of library and such, uh, going back to the, the uh, could have been corrected with only publicly available information. Uh, if it's in a uniquely identifiable position, it's not a hidden card error. We can fix it through some other means. So if that card is in a uniquely identifiable uh, position, we have one other check before we say it's HTE. If it's not in a uniquely identifiable position, we just go straight to HTE. But if it is, let's say face down, card on the battlefield, so a morph. If the situation involves a face down card on the battlefield, if it does, it's going to be HCE. Because all this other stuff applies and we have a face down card on the battlefield. If it doesn't involve, if it does not involve a face down card on the battlefield, uh, but it is in a uniquely identifiable position, it's not HCE. Who? So, as I mentioned before, most of this stuff is something you instinctively do uh, just to determine what's going on with the situation. It's already stuff you've had to do when you determine whether something was drawing extra cards or not. Before we go past this, does anyone have any questions about this? Sir? Yeah. Uh, does exactly one player know the identity of the card? If it is yes, it's not a hidden card error? If... It's just below. Ah, okay. Probably an error then. So if exactly one player knows the uh, identity of the card, does exactly, yeah. Yeah, those are switched around. Whoops. Cool. So if they do, uh, if only one player knows the identity of the card, it's hidden card error. If two or neither know the identity of the card, it is not hidden card error. Sir? Why does, uh, is that card uniquely identifiable position have two different blocks, two nodes? Probably another just error there. If it is uh, not in a uniquely identifiable position, it is HCE. Uh, yeah, that is just an error. Uh, oh, neglected. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, if if the card is in a uniquely identifiable position, uh, if it is, we do the one other check to see if it if it's a more face down on the battlefield, uh, and then we move forward. But if it uh, isn't, it's just HCE. Any others? Okay. Any other screw-ups I've had? Perfect. Okay, so... We understand now that it's hidden card error. And now we're going to start affixing... Uh, or, uh, applying the fixes, sorry. So we have a few other questions to ask ourselves. Was this card... Uh, or, or, sorry, was there a card put into a currently known location from the affected set immediately after the error? Ugh. All right, so what's the card put into a currently known location from the effect set? My goodness. People Trying to... why they have trouble with this, sir. Sorry? Yeah, and people wonder why it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's very dense and strangely written. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's talking something like, um, let's say I've drawn three cards, I haven't played my land for turn, boom, down on the, down on the battlefield. So... There was a card put into a currently known location from the affected set immediately after the error. 
That's probably one of those common things you're going to find. Maybe like a cast of a spell, something like that. We've put a... Because those cards were put into the affected set, which is your hand now. Uh, da, da, da. And, before we move much further, we're going to uh, define a set. A set is a physically distinct group of cards defined by a game rule or, or effect. Um, so, like, Coco, top six, those six cards are a set. They are distinct from your hand and the library. Uh, your hand is a set of cards. Uh, if you scry some, that number you scryed is a set of cards distinct from the library and your hand. Everyone understand that? Cool. So, if there was a card put from a currently known location, such as the battlefield or the stack, some known location there, uh, from your hand, which could be the affected set or wherever the affected set was, immediately after the air, uh, then we go to this, uh, this little bullet point. If there wasn't, we just go to the fix. It's super simple from there. So, aside from that card leaving the set, land put on the battlefield, still going to stack, had there been any other actions performed since the air? Uh, have any other actions been performed since the air? If there have, we're going to go to the fixes. If there have not been any other actions besides this small little thing, we go to this part. We perform a small backup, which is to say, land from the battlefield back to the hand. Perform a small backup, then we go to the fixes. So if they have, uh, they've got something in their hand, or they, they drew too many cards, they play a land, they've cast a spell, and they've passed turn, that's way too much. It's way too much already. So we're just going to go straight to the fixes and fix this to the best of our ability. If they have just played the land, have done nothing else, we're going to do a small backup and then go oh. to the fixes. Oh my gosh. That is... That is something. Wow. We're going to just prep you for that. Uh, so... There's other reminder text boxes. Uh, also, I should mention that if you're not in the uh, Florida Magic Judges or Georgia Magic Judges Facebook groups, that's where these were shared originally. So you might have a bit of idea of what all information is included on these. So on that information, or on that, that sheet I shared, these, I have these reminder boxes. So certain reminders include information about cards previously owned by the opponent may be taken into account while determining the set of cards uh, to which the remedy applies. All right, what that means. Um, I thought sees you, I duress you, I look at your hand in some fashion. And I've written down those cards. Okay, those are notes that you've taken about hidden information. We can take that information you've uh, copied and apply that to the possible fixes that we're about to do. Uh, you have information of that, you've scratched it out, you've kept up good records, great. So we can use that. Uh, and then that little thing there, reminder, a simple backup, simple backup, very simple backup, involves something like a single action. Discarding, playing a land, putting cards on top of the library are simple enough to back up. Much past that, and you're walking into sketchy territory. <laughs> Sir. So, I mean, this seems pretty simple, but if they don't, like, if someone thought sees their opponent, mm -hmm. doesn't write down their hand. They don't have information, we don't have... Uh, we can ask them, like, what do you remember before, before we show any information from their hand. Uh, we can try to piece together what they might remember, but uh, aside from that, especially if there starts to be an argument, like, no, you couldn't have solved that, I just drew that in this uh, three cars. All right, we're going to drop it, we're just going to go to the fixes. We didn't have that before, we don't need it now. Uh, it is great that we have that tool. Let me, let me put that out there. It's great that we can use information that players have written down. It is not a necessity that we use that tool. Okay? Any other questions before we go into the, the block of stuff? Oh, God. Okay. All right. Feast your eyes. Trigger warning. Yep. Next. Great. Oh, that's way better. All right. Well, just for, for information's sake, there are five routes we're going to take. Um... To do, do these two super similar, uh, and in fact, these three have the first couple of steps almost identical. So, this first column, this first line that we could take is uh, slightly different and super easy. And then we have the morph, which save the best for last, right? Is that box in the bottom? 
Uh, we're going to get to that when we get to morph. It's only used in one scenario, but... So if the set of cards with the excess cards no longer exist, and we don't have anything to apply a fix to, so we issue a warning, grant the appropriate time extensions, and record the penalty. Uh, they have a scry two. They scry three. Uh, they put whatever on the bottom, put one on top, and let's say they've even drawn or something like that. Well, that set no longer exists. That set that was the three cards that they were scrying instead of the two that they were supposed to doesn't appear within the game at, at this moment anymore. So we can't fix anything. We're just going to issue the warning, get the game moving back on, uh, and, and all the rest of the Jew as a judge at a call. The error put cards into a set prematurely, and other operations involving cards in that set should have been performed first. So this is mostly to do with the uh, rummage mechanic, uh, whereas you discard a card, draw a card. Uh, that's the best I've seen as an example to utilize this with. Uh, so let's say they were supposed to discard a card, draw a card. Instead, they drew a card and go to discard a card, but their opponent's like, wait a second. Let's say they discarded a card. That's a simple backup. We can just put that right back into the hand and apply this fix. First thing we're going to do is we're going to reveal, reveal the set of cards that contains the excess amount of cards. The opponent chooses that many previously unknown cards. Again, we can use the notes. We can uh, uh, get some help with this step. So the ch opponent chooses that many previously unknown cards. So uh, we have one excess of what they drew because they're supposed to discard first, draw a second. So they've drawn one excess. They choose one card from the previously unknown cards. That card's placed to the side in the wonderful side zone. No, there's no zone called side. While the operation is completed, so they go to discard a card as they should have done first, and then that card that is put off to the side is put back into the set. Does everyone understand that? Great. This is, even though it's been out for a few months, it's a fairly newer policy to most players because this kind of effect doesn't come up a lot. In fact, with almost all of HCE, it's great to explain what is about to happen before we apply what they're about to do. So you don't want to bait the opponent who's been affected by his opponent or his, his opponent drawing an extra card into choosing a card that they think is about to be discarded. That's the opposite of what's going to happen. That's the one card that can't be discarded. Okay? So go to the first one of the two that are very similar. A player didn't reveal a card they were supposed to before it went into a set. So, I'm sure most of you have seen uh, the great Patrick Chapin incident from the Pro Tour, where he pluses a Johnny and puts, I believe, a Tassiger into his hand without revealing it to his opponent. So this covers those kinds of information. You were supposed to reveal to check the legality that you made a, a play, made of a play, before it went into a set. So if you do that, the player reveals the set of cards that contains the unrevealed uh, contains the unrevealed card or cards. The opponent chooses that many previous un unknown, unknown cards, seeing a pattern here already, and we're going to treat those cards that they chose as the unrevealed cards. And then, if those cards that they chose could not have legally be, legally legally been put into the set. We treat those as excess cards. And then this purple block you'll see again, because excess cards are put back into their correct zone, and if that zone is the library, we're going to shuffle it into the random portion. And we are not to repeat the instruction that caused that infraction. So, uh, I've got two cards in hand. I've got a uh, Bear Cub and a Glory Seeker. I plus on a Johnny, put a Tasker into my hand, Without revealing it, I reveal my set because that's what the judge told me to do. They choose a card, and that's going to be the unrevealed card. They say your glory seeker is the unrevealed card. So that card would have been legal to choose, so it doesn't go back into the library. Because it's legal to be in my hand, uh, we still have a hidden, car uh, 
hidden card error. So we're still going to issue the warning. We're still going to grant the appropriate time extension and record the penalty. Because whether or not that was legal to have done, they still should have followed the card instructions as they uh, as it was written, sir. So, all right. We we draw the card instead of revealing it, putting it in. Front, Great, right? So we have to reveal our hand, correct? Yes. And then the opponent chooses one of those cards. Yes. And then if that card, so in this example, he chooses a creature, which is a legal option. Sure. Um, but chances are, say you have a mixture of spells and creatures. That is the likely scenario. And then the opponent's obviously not going to pick a creature. They're going to get max value. Right? Of course. So, at a situation, um, I forget what Planeswalker it is, but you reveal, if it's a creature, you put it in your hand, if it's a land, put it in the play. Uh, Nissa. Yeah. The, yeah. The one from the most recent Zen card. Yes. Um, Voices is in the card, I think it is. Debate of whether the player, it was supposedly a land, whether the player put it in the play or put it into their hand. Mm. No one could agree on anything, no witnesses. So it's all he said, she said. I was like, fine. Yeah. That, <laughs> so I, yeah. I asked them, you know, what did you do in the past? Well, again, known angle shooter, so he's always just going to say what he's going to say. <laughs> but I'm not going to fight him on it because it's not worth my time. Right. So I eventually just agree that it's um, an error. Um, I have him shuffle the land into his library. Um, I leave the plus one on the planeswalker. Is that roughly how that's supposed to go? Uh, sorry, they leave the, the oh, they, leave the counter that they right. Uh, yeah, it's because adding the counter is not where the infraction happened. The infraction happened as After it was that. resolving. Um, so shuffling the land. Uh, da, 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 da. So if it, you ruled that he put the land on the battlefield. No, put it into his hand. Put the land into his hand. So and then play. Right. Uh, so I would have to look at uh, how Nissa is warded. Uh, so you know, let's let's Might do that. Well just get there. I think yeah. it's sage animus. It is sage animus. Sage animus. Okay, great. Da, 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 da. So the oracle text of Nissa uh, Sage. There we go. Uh, Nissa Sage Animus says, "Reveal the top card of your, of your library. If it is a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand." Uh, so they just the debate was whether it was revealed or just put straight into the hand. Gotcha. Sir, do you have something to add? No, I was going to ask that question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the debate was whether it was revealed. Revealed. Opponent says it wasn't revealed. Player who activated the debate said it was revealed. No clear information. It's obviously a, yeah. sh a shot in the dark. Yeah. <sighs> that's but that's the correct way. Like, if I just say that he didn't reveal it, that was the correct resolution. Uh, so the... we, we go back. So uh, a player, if it was ruled, uh, and this falls on you as the judge, right. you have to determine, well, was it? Was it revealed or wasn't it? Um, so if you determine that it wasn't revealed and uh, it goes into their hand, so we follow this. So they the... They did something as immediately after the error happened, which is play a land. Right. Both players admit to that. That's a simple backup there. We can put that card back into right, their hand. That. We can reveal. Uh, the p opponent chooses that many previously unknown cards, mm -hmm. uh, which does not include the land that they played. That was previously to the error unknown. Right. And it was not the land, obviously. <laughs> right. Uh, so they choose what card and... So yeah, 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 they they uh, choose a card. We'll shuffle it into the unknown portion and go on with our game. Okay. Okay, sir. Um, so we talked about the um, the portion of the library that's random. So if there's say a terminus has happened and you know the bottom portion of the library. Yes. My question specifically to uh, the Legacy Doomsday deck: if the five cards are ordered and you know the library, does the card go randomly on top or on bottom? Uh. So <laughs> if you have a Something in this where where the, the, the library yep. is known and it's common doomsday. You know that five cards in your library, and you want to resolve something like this. Would you put the card on top of bottom? I believe Doomsday says put them on top of your library. Okay. You, make you don't have a library. Make, you make, make a five cards. You make, you make a five card library. And you have a you have an error like this where you want. Okay, so if I were in that situation, <laughs> I would make a call to put it on the bottom. Okay. Uh, if you know Legacy better than me, that's not unlikely. You may choose that it's more reasonable to put it on top. I don't know if there's specific policy written to cover the Doomsday scenario. Uh, no. So, I had a question relating back to the Nissa one. Though. Sure. You said that you revealed the hand, they chose a card, and then you shuffled the card back into the library? Right. Why would you shuffle the card back into the library if it was a legal 
revealed. It wasn't revealed, but it was a legal card. It, it would either be drawn or put on the, the battlefield. So the, the card they chose as the land uh, is not legal to put into your hand. Otherwise, put it into your but hand. But we're trying to fix that. The right. card right. chosen would but be... But so if it's... Well, yeah, they, they, they would. Hand, they get to choose the card. You have a, a card that would have been drawn, a card that would have been put on the battlefield in your hand. They choose one of them. Wouldn't the correct action be taken then, or would, am I miss? So still, they've had uh, extra card in hand. I don't know what uh, effects they could have that are limited to hand size, um, or any other effects that would uh, trigger off of going from library to hand. It could be very, could be very beneficial that they get that land into the hand instead of the battlefield. Um, but that's as the for, opponent's choice to choose that card to be revealed for Nissa. So that's but, the card that was that revealed. Might be true. If they choose the creature, wouldn't that go into the hand then? If, and they, if they choose the land, wouldn't that go into the battlefield? If they chose the creature, if they chose anything that wasn't land, because it says otherwise, put it in your hand. Right. If they chose something that wasn't land, that's illegally. That's that's something that was legal. Uh, but choosing a land was not legal to put into your hand. Okay, I see. Yeah, uh, that's it's a weird it, card because it's I, not yeah. straight. No, I understand right. the, the reasoning. It just seems... It, that's why I asked it, because I yeah. wasn't totally 100% on it to begin right. with. But it's just because it one puts it one place, one puts it the other place, and they could be wrong either way. Right, right. Sure. Um, so, yeah, the, the policy, it has to cover a whole bunch of cards. <laughs> is it going to cover everything perfectly? Still no. Um... I believe this is a huge upgrade from the policy we just uh, had. Um, but yeah, so in that scenario, it's a little weird um, because if they did choose the land, they could uh, da, 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 uh, they could, in essence, with the uh, ability, have just put it on the f uh, field, have the land drop. It's a little tricky to get into that kind of situation. So, is there any other questions about this particular scenario? Alright, so I believe the one that will come up most often is next. Which is a set contains more cards than it should. Super cut and dry. If you got more cards in the set than you should have there, you're going down this path. First thing we do, player reveals the set of cards that contains the excess. Whether that's your hand, whether that's a seven and a cocoa, whether that's uh, anything that says do X to this uh, uh, zone and then do something else with it and you do one more or two more that's the set we're going to apply it to the opponent chooses that many previously unknown cards so again if they duress you and they still have you, you have uh, Thoughtseize and you've got Thoughtseize uh, Divination and Island well they can't choose the Thoughtseize we know that they already know the Thoughtseize was in your hand so the chosen card or cards are excess cards and as we covered before, excess cards are put back into the correct zone. If that zone was the library, we shuffle the unknown portion. Do not repeat the instruction that caused the infraction. All right, that's going to be the most common. And the line that we've taken falls almost identically to the past one and very closely to the one before that. So fortunately, everything's been pretty simple. Pretty simple. Does anyone have any questions before we get to the last fix? Mm. Oh boy. Here we have Morph. Uh, or, or really, Mega Morph. Uh, mm -hmm. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> so, a player cast a card. Cast a card, so this doesn't work with uh, Manifest. Player cast a card face down without that card having the Morph, Mega Morph, ability. So we have more lines of questions to, to, to do before we get to the appropriate fixes. Did that player discover the error by their self? Let's say I bolt your little morph guy. All right, you put in the put in the graveyard. Turns out that was counterspell instead of Stratus Walker. Whoops. You didn't discover that error. You and your, your opponent discovered that error probably at the same time. This is covering... Did you look at your card to remember and thought it was weird that you had an extra one? And then you're like, oh, no, it's not weird why I have an extra one. It's because I didn't play a morph. That's what this covers. So next, did they add any cards to their hand since the card, uh, 
Look, did I say that right? Did they card any? Did they add any cards to their hand since the card was played? All right, sure. Uh, so, if they added anything to their hand, theoretically that could have been a another morph card. We can't track where those uh, cards have come from and, and stuff like that. So, anything extra to their hand automatically puts us in bad territory. I should follow the other path first. So. Did the player discover the error by themselves? If they didn't, or if they have added any cards to their hand since the card was played, we go all the way to this red thing that you can't see very well. It is identical to the top one. Issue a warning, except that warning is changed to a game loss. You can still give a game loss for a gameplay error. How exciting. So you would issue a game loss, grant the appropriate time extension, and record the penalty. So if they... Uh, did it discover the error? If they add cards, game loss. And then we see, well, did they even have the opportunity to cast something in their hand legally with the morph ability? If the answer is yes, well, then we let them switch the card with the morph and put the one on the board. Really simple stuff there. But if they don't, if they just went savage cheats and said, you know, this really does look like uh, that other card with morph in my sealed deck, then... Uh, it's unfortunately going to be a game loss for them because there's there's a significant error here <laughs> that we game. have to mitigate and this is the policy that we have chosen to mitigate it with. So if they have uh, just lands and spells with no morph ability and they also have something on this field face down that they cast with no morph ability, it's going to be a game loss. With the time extension, we're going to record the penalty. So there is in fact just one route to a warning with the morph. Fortunately, that's usually the most common one. I've, uh, I think I've given two uh, game losses for Morph, uh, and at least one of them I can assure you, the player uh, discovered it by themselves, it was the turn after they passed, and they absolutely had another card in their hand with Morph. Would have saved a game loss, would have kept the game going how it probably should have been played. So does anyone have questions about Morph? All right, I think that's it. So, who wants to volunteer for the first one? Oh, I'm always Oh, anything. perfect. Because it's not going to be... Nah, you, you say sit down. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so, a player calls you over because their opponent uh, is looking at their collected company set, saying they have seven cards. You can confirm seven cards. How do we fix that? Um, reveal these seven cards. Uh, to the opponent. Mm -hmm. The opponent chooses one of those cards uh, and you shuffle that back into the library and then finish resolving the collected company. Seems good. So we've got the one extra. That one extra should have been in the library. We're going to shuffle it into the uh, unknown portion. Sir? I was going to add you would choose from the smallest set. So if they grab three and then grab four with the next, you would direct you take the four with the extra. Right. Uh, I believe that was somewhere on. Yeah, there we go. One of the things I skipped over. So, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, we're going to use the smallest set possible in exactly the example that he showed, uh, or, or said. If they happen to, let's use um, uh, Dig Through Time, because that was just, yeah. Top eight. No, it was top seven. 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 Uh, but people would just draw three and then draw four more. Let's say one of the f they, they did four and then drew four more. Uh, we've still got an even set, so let's go. They drew five more. That makes sense here. Yeah, actually four still is fine because the first four is not uh, illegal. They were good to have that four. So that's fine. We can set that down. That second four, though, that is the smallest set with the air. Uh, or say, for example, they drew three and then uh, five. So that's still eight cards but we choose the smallest set that has the error, and that is the set with five cards. And the wordplay there threw me off when I first read it. I thought it would have meant you take from the three card uh, pile that they drew first. Yeah, no, not what that means, because those three cards were legal to have grabbed. Uh, and then secondly, something most of you likely already know, only the head judge and head judge approved judges may give a game loss penalty. Do check with them first. Um, not that we're saying you don't know what you're doing, but it's great to have a second opinion before we take before we issue a penalty penalty that we can't take back. Can't take back a game loss. Uh, the best we can do is go over and apologize. 
Um, and that's, that's really uh, hardly consolation for the player who got the game loss there. Hey, perfect. Okay. Who's ready for the second question? Or, sorry. sir? I'm sorry, I have a question. No, it's fine, it's fine. It's not directly related to that. Uh, sure. I'm just is, it still, uh, is it still game loss or failure to reveal morphs? Uh, at the end of game, you pile everything back in, you didn't reveal it? At the end of game, but it's... I, you know, we're playing, I play a morph face down, I never flip it. If either, either somebody concedes that the game is over, however it is, and I just mash it in with everything else out of here. Is it still auto game loss? Uh, I want to say not that's... HC, not yeah, no, I want to say that's covered under the gameplay error upgrades. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, whereas, uh, it, if a player had an opportunity to, uh, to, like, stop you, I forget exactly how it's worded, um, generally no, right, generally, generally no, no, um, because the player who, um, let's say someone's bouncing it to your hand, uh, -huh. uh that player has the opportunity to say, you need to reveal that before it goes back to your hand, right. um, so we're not going to give a game loss for that. Uh, if a player is has already lost the game and has morph on the field, uh, they're going to they've already lost the game. Uh, so putting those morphs isn't going to do a, a whole lot to the game they've uh, just lost. Um, though you do still have to reveal them. Don't right. twist so there. Like, so Sir, like I'm saying like if I have a morph on the field, right? Sure. And and it's overwhelming. You can see. And we're going to go to game two, mm -hmm. right? And I just mash all my stuff together mm -hmm. without ever revealing my morph. I know, I know, I know. When Hans hit, there was some, there was information that, but that right. was that was just instant game loss. So yeah, I, I believe that's covered under gameplay error. I'll okay. look that up and I'll get back with you after the, sorry, the seminar. Sorry, and sorry, and real, I apologize. no, that's fine. Um, I sir, oh, thank you. Back me off. Yeah, no, that's fine. The person who has the morph won. Okay, gets stopped to yep. reveal. And it's invalid. Does that fall under a hidden card? Uh, they've likely put cards into their hand. Uh, it would. We would come over, check everything that needs to be checked, um, and still go down the hidden card uh, path. Okay. Um, so yeah, we would. Uh, did they discover it themselves? If they flipped it over so and this was at the end of the game when they're about to pick up and they go, wait, reveal those cards. Flip it over. And it's not. That is both players discovering this thing at the same time. Uh, at least that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, so that would fall under a game loss path. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I would also like to add to that. Like, if you ever investigate and see that a non-morph is revealed, mm -hmm. you know, always make sure that they didn't intentionally Right, right. Uh, which just goes into the basic, invest basic investigation. Um, fortunately, though, uh, this big boogeyman that is Morph is about to completely rotate out of standard here soon. Uh, so the relevance of it is going to drop significantly. Um, so that is fortunate. Um, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, so, from a policy standpoint, does this... I mean, you might not know, but has anyone ever thought that this might incentivize not taking notes as a player anymore? Like, if you have a memory good enough to just remember your opponent's hand, you sure. gain an advantage by not writing down those notes because we can't use them. I'm sure it's been discussed. Um, I'm not sure how relevant that is to us as a judge program uh, to incentivize or decentivize players taking notes. Uh, if we encourage players to just have better memory, okay. Um, but I don't think incentivizing or decentivizing note-taking is going to play a major role in how we shape our policy. Okay. Alright. So, let's say... Who's the second? Anyone else? Anyone else? Alright. No, no, nah, nah, don't worry about it. You already got one. Okay. So, a player has some cards in hand. We'll go four. They draw for card. They, they draw a card for turn. And they shuffle up, like they do. And then they recount. And they... They realize they went from four cards to six cards. So they call you over, and he's just saying, uh, he called him on himself, saying they must have just stuck together, because this is weird. So how do we fix that? Anyone? Anyone? Go ahead. Okay, you reveal their hand to the opponent. Well, actually, you ask the opponent if they've revealed their hand before, sure. if they know of any cards in their hand. Sure. And uh, if they do, 
then after you reveal the rest of the zone, or well not zone, but set of cards that were not known before, they basically get to jam a card that goes back in their opponent's deck. Basically. Shuffled if nothing else was changed in their deck. Right. Such as scrying and or terminus and other things. So the thing is that would so that would fall under the fourth path here. A set contains more cards than it should. They went from four, should be at five, it's at six. It's got an excess card. Let's follow that path, continue on for life. <coughs> do, 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 do. Uh, so, let's get the Oracle text for this next card. Does anyone want to be a volunteer preemptively? Anyone? <laughs> That's it. It's just a lot of text is all. Da, 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 da. No. No, we're going with Karanos, God of Storms. So, player has Karanos, God of Storms, which says, reveal the first card uh, you draw on each of your turns. Whenever you reveal a land card this way, draw a card. Whenever you reveal a non-land card this way, Karanos deals three damage to target creature or player. So, let's say they're playing a uh, blue-red Delver deck, and they just have this as sideboard tech. What they do... What they do is they do the little Delver Peak and put it in your hand and say three damage to this. Um, that's weird. Anyone want to explain to me how we're going to fix this? Todd. Uh, okay, so we need to find out if the opponent knows anything about the contents of their hand okay. and then reveal their hand to their opponent, sure. and their opponent chooses which card is going to be considered the first card they draw for turn. There we are. And then that card is what we base the result of Karanos's trigger ability. Alright. So, uh, if they choose a land, you draw an extra card. If they choose a non-land, you let you want. Anyone have any... No? That's that's how I would, uh, how I would roll that. Uh, we reveal the set, they pick a card, that's going to be what is determined to be the un that's going to be the revealed card that was not revealed. Sir? So what would differentiate that between that and actual distribution? Uh, so Karano specifically is not a trigger. Um, it is a re uh, replacement effect, or I don't know if it's a replacement, just a, a static yeah, static ability that modifies how you draw your card. Uh, it just says, reveal the first card uh, you draw on each of your turns. Oh, does it say when? Oh. Right, yeah, right. Um, now, there's an example in the IPG of Dark Confidant, um, whereas, let's say you have Dark Confidant, and you say, Dark Confidant, trigger. Uh, and then you draw for that, but don't reveal it. If you've done that, we're just going to follow a similar path. You're going to reveal your hand, they're going to pick, the car, pick a card, and that is the card that you revealed off of Dark Confidant. And of course, we're going to use information that they've already uh, seen, to eliminate that, those options. So if you've already revealed your Emrakul to go to five, put it in the hand, they can't choose that again. Okay? Um, Fixed your color. Ooh. Thanks. <laughs> Although if you're playing Bob and Emrakul in the same deck, you're probably a bad I have, player. Well, I've, I did that I, in Commander. I've, I've, <laughs> I, I got beat with that, actually, at a recent IQ. It was... I have a question. Oh, man. Do, you use man. Your, do you use the opponent of the person who has the hidden card error's notes, correct? You can. Do you also use the player themselves' notes? Like if they reveal for Bob and they reveal an Emrakul and they say, oh, I'm sure I revealed this, and the opponent goes, I don't remember that. I mean, obviously, you. Damage on, it's their, on, on the notes, you're going to rely on notes. Yeah, right. But or I mean, in, in, okay, say they have a. Uh, a Five casting cost card in their hand. They say, "I revealed that." And they go, "No, you revealed some other five casting card and already played it." Like, if, if they, it's something more reasonable than that, you still sure, sure take that into account. It's it's so. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Um, I want to highlight may that okay. word <laughs> may be taken into account. Um, if you uh uh uh. uh if you feel comfortable that these notes are correct with your judgment as a judge, you believe these notes are correct, uh, utilizing all the information they've told you, then sure, you can use those as notes that the opponent knows these cards. Um, and same as the other, uh, other side. If you believe that those notes are correct, 
go ahead and use them. Uh, again, it's a tool that we just recently got, and it's a great tool, but that's just it. It's a tool you can use. So we have Karanos figured out. We have Bob. They get hit for stuff. What other, other things do I have? Sweet. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's say I've got a divination. Um, I draw one card, easy peasy, draw the second, and three more cards follow that card to drop on the table. Uh, they're face up and they're everywhere. How are we going to fix that? Dexterity error. Dexterity error. Yeah. It's not hidden card. It's not hidden card error. We're not gonna, gonna go down any of these flow paths. We just look into to probably looking at extra cards for this specific scenario. Uh, let's say we are in standard, and you've got uh, the classic. Uh, what is it? Blue green humans versus uh, mono blue prison. <laughs> Uh, they say, uh, pour over pages, draw four, and his opponent's like, go get it, man, draw four. So, draws the four, uh, untaps some lands, as the opponent's reading this long text of cards and says, wait a second, this is draw three. Draw three, untap two, discard. So, they call you over, now you're here. Who wants to take this one? Ricks. They, what? You heard me. Hit it up. No. I certified <laughs> him. <laughs> um, so the the opponent confirmed what you're drawing. Sure. So we're not looking at HCE. Okay. It doesn't mean we didn't draw extra cards. It's true. Um, so we're going to be looking at, um, you know. Try a, a game rules violation. Right. I was going to say, or, or draw, I want to say draw extra cards. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, like. Uh, you can make an argument for communications policy uh, uh, violation I'm not as well. That <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's just gamers violation. We're going to uh, because this falls under gamers violation. We can do a backup here, um, and under the backup section 1.4, it says if we're going to put cards back, we do it randomly. Um, but of course, we we'll have to untap the stuff. Uh, the lands that they may have un or retap, sorry, retap what they've untapped in the spell and just back up through that. Again, do backups and game losses through the head judge uh, because we like having second opinions. We like making sure we can't uh, uh, we can't apologize for something we can't undo. Yeah. So the last little example I have involves read the bones. Anyone? Anyone? All right. So uh, player cast reads the bones and. They're at two minutes left, they're in this grindy uh, uh, control mirror, and this guy knows he can win if he just gets a few more turns in. So read the bones, the opponent's like, it's good. Uh, picks up two, puts in the hand, it's like, oh man, this is, this is not, this is not how this card works. So they raise their hand, call for a judge, and you come over. They explain, judge, uh, I, I cast read the bones, I drew the two, and I didn't scry. How do you handle this, sir? You can easily resolve the spell. Okay, why? Because you looked at two, while you didn't actually make that mental active decision or, or voice it out loud, you chose to choose two, and you drew two. Okay. Uh, so both of the cards that you looked at went on the top. Okay. So you didn't do anything illegal while resolving the results. Anyone have anything to add to that? Sort of the default act. Sir? It's almost like a dexterity area where you can put the back on top of your deck. Okay. That's what you're to Go ahead. Questions. Yes. He put them in his hand. They are in his hand. Does he have other cards? There are like four other cards. Right. He's so we, we five have to and figure six. out what's going on top here. That's not. It's not just like the two he picked up. We have no idea what he picked up. True. So it's going to be too random. No. He's so no. Because you can describe. What is the whole? What is read the bones? Sorry. Uh, read the bones says. Yeah. Well then you have those two cards. Okay. So yeah. Draw. Yeah. Read the bones is scry two, draw two, lose two life. Welcome to your two new cards. <laughs> so uh, we're we're running a little low on time. So there it was a new tournament shortcut, if I'm not mistaken, that was uh, introduced with the introduction of scry as an evergreen keyword. If someone is instructed to scry and don't, they are assumed to have left it on top. It's uh, so we're going to use a tournament shortcut. 
in this not HCE situation. Okay, so I believe I'm gonna cut you guys loose. Does anyone have any questions before we finish? Something that came up last week with a judge I was mentoring that recently became certified, sure. and I, it's a situation I've never dealt with, so I wanted some insight on this. Sure. I'm watching a game at a Legacy IQ. Oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> player A is playing Grixis Delver, looks at the top card of his library, reveals a brainstorm, cool. sets card in hand, goes ahead and flips Delver, draws for turn. I'm spectating and see that he draws a foil daze. Okay. He comes over to fix the situation. I let him handle it as it is a normal situation. Sure. And showed him kind of the right path to take there because he immediately jumped to drawing extra cards, which I had to remind him is no longer a penalty. In there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, got him on the right track there, and then he handled that very well. Okay. My question was... As a spectator, could he use my outside of advice to simply fix this situation without having to involve the opponent and such since I am an outside source and I am, will assume in this role, a floor judge sure. and know the card and can verify what card it was? Uh, so it wouldn't change uh, a whole lot, especially because it was not publicly identifiable information, uh, which is one of the things you uh, need to have to not have it uh, be HCE. Um, so I would say, even with Floor Judge being right there, I would still just go down the path of policy that we have for us, uh, because it, it also allows us to consistently give the same ruling. Sir? The main reason is because the opponent may also feel that there is favoritism. Depending on how good and or bad the card is, it's relevant to you. But depending on the situation, they may feel there's favoritism depending on the type of card. Yeah. So as long as you follow that, there's no way that you can be wrong. Right. Does anyone else have a question, sir? Um, the perform a small back up to the point right after the air, like, yes. like playing a land back in their hand. Yes. Does that require uh, head judge's approval? That would not require head judge's approval. Some minor. Uh, small, minor things like that uh, are, are, are simple to be done. If you have any doubt don't. that, yeah, don't. <laughs> You should just know this is a simple thing. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Sir? Uh, well, I just wanted to mention that a simple backup is something that's actually mentioned as being separate from a backup in the, um, in the IPT. So it's not it's not like you're just referring to call, it's, it actually defines as sort of a separate thing. Well, sure. we, we did cover that. It's fine. But, alright, so if we've got nothing else, alright, you guys go ahead and enjoy your last...